God designed our sexuality and yet we've allowed ourselves to be seduced by the world. It's time to take it back. In this video, I'm going to take you through a number of steps that are going to help you encounter a sexual detox. In our hyper-sexualized culture that is obsessed with pornography and sexuality, there's no better time to do this than now. Now, I probably don't need to spend too much time telling you that our sexuality has been distorted and that the culture's perspective of sexuality is generally pretty perverted. You can see it. It's apparent in media, in your friend group, at your school, at your university, in your workplace. You know that there's a problem. And yet what we need to do is get back to the source of how God created us and how he intended for our sexuality to be. I think about in the beginning, in the garden with Adam and Eve. There's Adam originally and the God's like, hey, it's not good that man should be alone. And so he creates Eve out of his rib, right? And so now there's Adam and there's Eve. And then it goes on to talk about how man shall leave his father and his mother and become one flesh with his wife. So we understand this kind of sexual union where two are made one flesh. This sexuality was designed to take place inside this covenant of marriage where it was supposed to be fruitful. Immediately we go to the idea of fruitful um, having children, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's fruitful in that sense, but it's also fruitful relationally where two are being made one, in that intimate bond is being made that much stronger, and then also it's pleasurable. Another key aspect of what biblical sexuality looks like is found in 1 Corinthians 7, 4. For the wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. Likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. We're getting a picture here of this kind of selfless, self-sacrificial orientation towards sexuality within marriage. Okay, so this is the ideal, but we all know that we don't measure up to this ideal of how we should be sexually. We've all fallen short. And one of the areas that we've fallen short is in masturbation, right? Um, when I think about masturbation, a couple of things that come to my mind are it's self-serving, right? Where biblical sexuality is self-giving and selfless, masturbation is self-serving. And it's what, what kind of pleasure can I get immediately? You're bonding with a screen instead of bonding with a woman, um, you're you're kind of deadening your dopamine receptors where you're encountering so much of this high stimulus uh, material, especially if you're watching pornography, which we'll talk about in a second, and you're not able to react as you should to the real world. Also, one of the really damaging things about uh, masturbation is that you are now connecting this idea of shame and guilt that you experience after masturbating with um, sexual pleasure which is not a good correlation because God designed sexual pleasure to be a good thing to not, you're not supposed to feel shame and, and guilt afterwards. But when we take it out of the context that he designed in masturbation, uh, that's what we correlate. That's the, the connection. Now I've heard guys, even in the comments of this channel, talk about the fact that they have to get it out. They have to masturbate somehow. They have to like, that's natural. Um, it's good. They, they need to do it. So, you know, they're kind of conflicted about what God says about it. And they're like, Hey, but I have this need that needs to be fulfilled. I just think that's total baloney. There's also something called nocturnal emissions. So the fact that your body has this cycle of, hey, if it needs to get out, it will get out. I'm telling you, you don't need to worry about that. You don't need to, you don't need to force it. And so ultimately what I'm trying to tell you guys is don't make excuses for your own sin. I know it's hard. I know a lot of uh, guys, you guys may be addicted to this kind of stuff um, just because it is so, uh, it's so powerful. Sexuality is such a powerful thing. That's why I think we need to be serious about how we're engaging with it, how we're cutting off certain areas where we've kind of slipped and we've kind of slided a little bit and because we're like, oh, it can allow this, this is okay, at least it's not as bad as this. It's a dangerous thing. I don't want you to sit in that shame. Know that Jesus already knows what's going on. You can't hide it from him, but he also offers his forgiveness and his help in the midst of this battle. So it's not about, I got to do this in order to try to be this perfect Christian or earn God's favor or any kind of that legalism. No, it's about actually uh, relying on God for strength, understanding that as his children, as somebody that's repented for our sin and put our faith in him, as his children, he's giving us his power and his presence to actually overcome this temptation. One of the things I want to encourage you into in this detox is developing certain habits that will help you avoid these temptations. So one of the first things that I recommend to guys is when you wake up in the morning, just get up, get out of bed, take a shower or go on a run, go do something. Don't just linger around. Don't give yourself that opportunity to, to uh, you know, be tempted in that way, really. And so whatever that means, if that means you got to 
get out of bed right away. You're hopping up um, and, and you're just heading out the door right away for a walk. That's what you need to do. Maybe it's nighttime for you. That's the temptation. And go on a run beforehand. Just completely exhaust yourself where you're running around and then just head right to bed or take a shower or whatever. And, and, and you got to get in this mindset of developing these habits to get yourself away from the times and the moments where you're most tempted. I'm going to talk a little bit more about pornography and social media and how those things can also play into the temptation by kind of nullifying those things. We can help ourselves in this battle as well. I mentioned pornography earlier and all the other things that I had mentioned apply to this similar to masturbation uh, we're not responding as we would to the real world because we're fixated on these um, fantasies basically and it's instant gratification and all of that and we know that this isn't how God wants us to engage in sexuality we're bonding with this screen we're bonding with these people on the other side and then all of a sudden we're switching so quickly going from one person to the next basically being a virtual prostitute in a sense and I know you guys don't want to be in that space. You don't want that life. And so what I want to offer you is um, hit the link in my description and sign up for Covenant Eyes. It is a service that will help keep you accountable online. It'll send you a report of the history of your internet usage to somebody in your life that cares for you, that can keep you accountable. I've seen this do wonders for guys. And ultimately what my goal is, is that we would join both the spiritual and the practical, understanding that yes, God is our ultimate accountability partner. And God is the one who we should be, uh, you know, focusing on that his presence is with us and, and we want to honor him in that. Absolutely. But also joining the practical elements of well, uh, as well of how we can run from temptation. And this is a practical tool that I encourage you to use. It gives you 30 days free. It is an affiliate link. You can click the link in my description. The last thing that I want this video to be is just a shaming session where you just feel super awful about who you are and what you've done and you just feel like like a piece of garbage, right? That's not the goal here. I, I don't want you to leave that way. I think of the woman caught in adultery, right? She'd been caught up in sexual sin and people were lining up to stone her basically according to the law. And Jesus came up to them and he said, hey, if any of you hasn't sinned, you know, throw the first stone, right? If you, if you haven't sinned, then, you know, do it, go for it. And they all walked away one by one. And Jesus said, neither do I condemn you, go and sin no more. I think that's his approach to us. It's, it's not that um, God is looking at us with anger necessarily, or, or just, or hatred, um, especially as his children, Jesus has already taken that all on himself. So what he calls us to, he says, he's go and sin no more. This idea of repentance of saying, okay, like, Hey, um, I'm not going to throw down judgment on you, but the calling is to hold is for holiness, right? That's the calling. And that doesn't mean that we measure up to that all the time. Uh, but that's the calling. And, and so we need to understand ultimately when we're looking at our you know, the shame coming in and, and telling us, okay, you know, God could never love you the way that you are, or God could never uh, save you, or you're too far gone. We need to understand that God's grace is powerful, that his promises are real, that the, the fact that he will never leave us nor forsake us, that his love for us as his children is unconditional, that nothing can separate us from the love of God. All these things we need to remember. Now, that doesn't give us an excuse to sin, right? That's not, that's not licensed to just do whatever we want. But it should be a comfort knowing that we have him on our side. Okay, so we talked about masturbation. We talked about pornography. And the third thing I want to cover here in this detox is social media. And this might be kind of a little bit of an underrated one that people wouldn't talk about as much. But in my opinion, social media can often be foreplay to pornography and masturbation. Just the kinds of material that you can get just on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. Um, it's not good. That's not, doesn't mean that it's safe or it's right or it's pure just because it's on those platforms and it's not on some sketchy website. And so what I want for us is to be more um, observant and discerning about what we're taking in on social media. This isn't about, uh, you know, dwelling in fear. Oh no, is that, I'm watching this. Is that, cause, oh no, is that, I'm lusting right now. It's about just being wise just being wise with what we're doing. And what I encourage you to do is take a social media audit. It's about being real with ourselves. We need to stop saying, oh yeah, I'm just here for the comedy. I'm just here for the laughs. It doesn't affect me. Oh no, that's not why I'm here. Be honest with yourself. Is it? Maybe it is. What I want to encourage you guys to do is a social media audit as part of this detox is cut anybody out of your social media that tempts you to look sexually, like seriously, or, or like it tempts you, gets you riled up or 
I, I'm going to be honest here. If you follow somebody, if you follow a, a woman on social media, and the, really the only reason you follow her is because she's attractive, I just ask you to unfollow her. I just encourage you to do that. And and I, it's not because um, you, you can't uh, you know ever be attracted to a woman and, and you got to just cut her out of your life because I'm all of a sudden attracted to her and like this is a heinous thing. But just on social media, I think we can get in this realm of fueling the fantasy, right? Fueling the fantasy. Like this woman is not your girlfriend. She's not your wife. Um, she's not even your friend. She, she doesn't even know you. And so when you're kind of going back day in, day out, watch this person's videos and you have this kind of sexual attraction to her maybe and you're fueling that kind of fantasy i just ask you to cut that out i don't think that's going to be good for you any areas in your life where you can stop fueling the fantasy you're going to be better off because god wants us to live in the real world he wants us to pursue a real woman and actually care for her and provide for her and protect her the world wants you to live in this make-believe land where you can get anything and everything that you want whenever you want. But that is a recipe for toxic and harmful sexuality. I want you to know, friend, that you're not too far gone, that I don't care how many times you masturbate, I don't care how many hours you've watched pornography, I don't care how many people you've slept with, there is sexual healing available for you in Christ. There just is. That's just a fact. You haven't out sinned God. You haven't gone too far for God to bring about redemption and healing and restoration as you kind of embark on this sexual detoxes, looking at these areas of your life. I just want to encourage you, approach it with delight and not despair, knowing that God can bring about new life. If you enjoy this content and got something from it, I'd ask you to subscribe and join the Brotherhood because I'm putting out new videos like all the time and uh, it would be a pleasure to have you a part of the community. If you want to support what I'm doing with this channel, I'd ask you to support on Patreon. It is my Patreon for my other channel as well, Daily Disciple. And by supporting what I'm doing here, you enable me to continue to make this content to help strengthen the Brotherhood to lead and love. Until next time, keep pursuing the mission.